I am Mal Fobi, the Medical Director for the Center for Surgical Treatment of Obesity at Tri-City Regional Medical Center and at St. Mary Medical Center in Long Beach, California. I described the banded gastric bypass, an enhanced gastric bypass, characterized by placing a band proximal to the anastomosis. The banded gastric bypass, why? The bypass depends on its restrictive mechanism to be effective. The other medic mechanisms are contributory. So with time, the bypass loses its restrictive mechanism. So placing a band around the pouch in the gastric bypass procedure enhances that restrictive mechanism. First described in 1989, after observing that converting gastroplasts to gastric bypass, leaving the band in place, enhanced the weight loss with the banded gastric bypass, we started performing the banded gastric bypass. And at this time, we have a device, the gabbering device, that is used for this procedure. The banded gastric bypass, the gabbering banded gastric bypass, is a modification of the gastric bypass operation, enhancing its restrictive component. Obesity, particularly morbid obesity, is a lifelong disease that is recalcitrant to treatment, even surgical treatment. It has medical, psychological, economic, and social ramifications. Surgical treatment at this time is the only effective modality. However, surgical treatment needs to be effective both in weight loss and weight loss maintenance. That is, maintenance of at least 50% of the excess weight loss for 10 years in more than 75% of the patients and should address as many of the ramifications due to obesity. Unfortunately, the current trend in bariatric surgery is driven not by effectiveness in weight loss and weight loss maintenance, but by minimal invasiveness, ease of performing the operation, and amelioration of comorbid conditions. Industrial and corporate stimulus, novel surgical techniques, and government and third party reimbursements. The rationale for the ban in the primary gastric bypass surgery is to control the stomach size so we can increase the weight loss and provide the weight loss maintenance. Many studies have shown that placing a device around the stomach or the pouch reduces the size of the stoma and the pouch and therefore enhances the restrictive component. So they rationale behind a banded gastric bypass is to control the stomach size and the pouch size. The gab ring device which is designed for the banded gastric bypass comes in four sizes. A 5.5, a 6.0, a 6.5, and a 7.0 centimeter gab ring. The ring produces a diameter of 1.5 to 1.6 centimeters take into consideration the thickness of the stomach wall. In the non-banded gastric bypass, the pouch size is estimated by each surgeon, and the stomach size is variable depending on the gastroenterostomy made by the surgeon. The gab ring maintains the stomach size over the life of the operation, and patients have been evaluated 20 years after the operation and their stomach size remains the same. Therefore, there is no standard in the gastric bypass, and with time, the pouch and the stomach will dilate. As you can see in this picture, with time, when that stomach dilates, the proximal jejunum becomes part of the proximal pouch and therefore increases the reservoir of the pouch and then decreases the restrictive component. In the banded gastric bypass, the pouch and stomach size are calibrated, standardized, and reinforced. The band is placed around the mid portion of the pouch, therefore acting as the stoma or the pseudopolaris, and in return also controlling the pouch size. As you can see in this diagram, the surgeon is forced to make a tubular pouch and a small pouch, and the ring is placed around the mid portion of the pouch. With the ring around the pouch, the reservoir size of the pouch is controlled over a long term. Without the ring, the reservoir capacity of the pouch increases with time. The effectiveness of the banded gastric bypass 
has been observed and reported by McLean when he reviewed the work of Capella, stating that the most promising technique based on a large series at this time is the Capella Capella banded gastric bypass. And this was published in obesity surgery in 1997. Salinas has published a 15 year report on the banded gastric bypass, showing that there's enhanced weight loss, weight loss maintenance, even after 15 years, with a 70% excess weight loss. The power size is important for weight loss maintenance, and the stomach size is important. Is this true? Where's the meat? Where's the data for this? Review of the literature shows that there are about six or seven long-term studies going from five to 15 years, showing that the weight loss with the banded gastric bypass is more than that with the standard gastric bypass, and the weight loss maintenance is enhanced. This work has been replicated by Cruz, Vega from Spain, Capella from the US, Fobi from the US, White from New Zealand, Salinas from Venezuela, and also Dr. Margo from Brazil. There was a prospective study using the banded gastric bypass done in 1995 and reported in obesity surgery, where it showed that the weight loss and maintenance with the banded gastric bypass was above 70% and that was maintained for more than eight years. As compared to the study done by Sugarman, the weight loss with the gastric bypass averaged between 55 and 58%. Our just reported an 11 year follow up with the banded gastric bypass, showing that the excess weight loss is maintained above 70%. This result is better than observed with the biliopancreatic bypass. Others have done comparative prospective evaluation, among them being Bresler, Kavaha, and Award. Bresler did a study comparing the weight loss in the superobese and showed that the excess weight loss with the banded gastric bypass was 73% as opposed to 57% without the banded gastric bypass. Endoscopic evaluation of banded versus non-banded gastric bypass shows that the non-banded stoma stretches up to four centimeters. As you can see in this diagram, when that stoma stretches, the proximal jejunum becomes part of the reservoir and therefore defeats the restrictive component of the bypass procedure. Published reports of band placement in failed gastric bypass document increased weight loss and weight loss maintenance. Bresler, Kaiser, Gobel, and Heath have all reported their findings with banding the pouch in the failed gastric bypass. And they've all reported that banding the pouch enhances the weight loss and the weight loss maintenance. As you can see here, the lab band is placed over a failed gastric bypass, and Bresler did a series of patients which he followed for five years, showing that the weight loss was more than 50% by placing the band over the pouch. We have two studies reported from Brazil that demonstrate the effectiveness of banding the pouch. One of the studies used a silacer ring band and the other study was without the band. The two papers from two different institutions in, Bar in Brazil show that the band enhances the amount of weight loss and also enhances the extent of weight loss and the extent of weight loss maintenance. The percentage excess weight loss at two years with the banded gastric bypass is about 78% as compared to 72% with the non-banded gastric bypass. The percentage excess weight loss is about 69% compared to 61. However, if you look at the success rate, that is more than 50% excess weight loss maintained for more than five years, the banded gastric bypass has a 90% success rate as opposed to 78 with the gastric bypass. And if you look at it in terms of BMI, the banded gastric bypass has a 93% success rate as opposed to 50% with the non-banded gastric bypass. In our Center for Surgical Treatment for Obesity, where we've used the banded gastric bypass for more than 21 years, with more than 8,000 operations, we have patients that have been followed for 20 years. The weight loss at nine years is 71% of excess weight loss with the banded gastric bypass. We've looked at patients with BMI between 32 and 40, as compared to the general population, and they have excess weight loss approaching the 90%. And when we looked at patients who were 500 pounds and above, they maintain an excess weight loss above 60%. And in patients who are old, that means 60 years and above, they also maintain an excess weight loss above 
60% and nine years of follow-up. The other finding we notice in the banded gastric bypass is that the ban reduces the incidence of stenosis in the bypass procedure. We also notice that the patients with the ban who had the ban removed had higher incidence of hypo reactive hypoglycemia as compared to those with the ban. And this was confirmed by the study by Casper where he showed that he can treat patients with reactive hypoglycemia by placing a band around the pouch. What are the downfalls for the band? Mainly three things. There's a possibility of erosion. Less than 2% of the patients who have a band will suffer a band erosion. This can be treated expectantly or by endoscopic removal of the band. Kinking or slippage of the band can cause functional obstruction requiring surgical intervention. And finally, uh, less than 5% don't tolerate the restrictive component of this band and therefore might need a band removal at some stage. In conclusion, banding the pouch results in more weight loss, results in more patients, even the super obese, losing weight, and results in better weight loss maintenance. There's even evidence that the band in the gastric bypass also results in less incidence of outlet stenosis, less dumping syndrome, and less reactive hypoglycemia. Banding the pouch converts the gastric bypass from the gold standard to the platinum standard of bariatric surgery. Thank you.